Okay, it's my first day of learning to be a website designer. Wish me luck. A few moments later. <sighs> what does this all even mean? So, I don't actually think I'm cut out to be a web designer. Whoa, whoa, whoa! What are you wasting your time on? You don't need to learn how to code to be a website designer anymore. Really? I don't? No, it's not 2003 anymore. Here's what I would do if I wanted to learn to be a website designer all over again. What most people spend an absolute ton of time on is learning to code, but I hate to break it to you if you've just spent weeks or months doing so because that's kind of a waste of time these days as coding websites from the ground up isn't really the way that things are done anymore. Let me explain. Website building used to look like this and the resulting websites looked kind of awful. But now website building looks a lot more like this and the websites as a result look a heck of a lot more modern and are way more functionality capable. So basically stop wasting time learning HTML. I guarantee you if you custom code a website with HTML these days, it's going to look like it was built in 2003 because custom coding was the technology in 2003 and we are well beyond that now. Websites these days are created on website building platforms. You might've heard of the names of a few of them before. The big ones are things like Squarespace, WordPress, Shopify, Wix, Showit, and Webflow. So that means the real first step for becoming a designer these days is to research and pick one web design platform to learn. So often I see aspiring designers stressing themselves out thinking that they need to learn every single website building platform out there or at least a few of them in order to have a great enough variety of options to offer clients. However, that actually couldn't be further from the truth. There are without a doubt more clients out there on each and every website website building platform that you could ever dream of serving as one person. So when you pick, just pick one website building platform to learn. When you do this, you first learn way faster and second, become really skilled with that platform, meaning you build better websites, which attracts better clients. When aspiring designers tell me that they want to learn multiple website building platforms, to me, it sounds a little bit like when someone says that they want to learn to play sports and then they go and they learn golf and they learn hockey and they learn swimming all at the exact same time. I think you and I both know that these three different sports are three totally different things. And while yes, of course, there are some complementary skills to every sport. If your goal is to get good at golf, you're going to get better at golf a lot faster if you just learn golf and you don't also waste your time learning hockey and swimming at the same time. Now I realize it's hard to pick the right website building platform to learn and take all of your time into when you are completely new to the field. So I actually put together a video comparing the top four most popular website builders right now. You can find that video linked above here and also at the end of that platform comparison video, I have a full explanation section on how to pick the right platform if you're hoping to do this as a new website designer. Now in full transparency, the website building platform, which I chose to learn back in the day and would 100% choose over again if I had to pick again, was Squarespace. Granted, that might not be the right platform for you, so be sure to watch the other video, again, linked up above, because a different website building platform might fit you and your future ideal clients better. Now, step number two is to find educational resources on the tech online. Now, normally my first go-to for learning absolutely anything is a book, but because web design changes so quickly, books go out of date before you can blink, so they're really not a great option in this situation. The same thing goes for learning web design or coding at university or college. They're teaching the tech and coding of five years ago, but not what's being actually used today. Both of my brothers actually studied computer science in university, and then they went on to be developers in the field. But then when I asked them how much of what they learned at university did they actually use in their jobs, they said, to be honest, like nothing. <laughs> what they learned in school was good to understand how development worked and how to think like a developer. And they learned some of the basic foundational coding languages. But then once they actually got out into the field and were working in the field, they had to learn what the latest coding languages were and those hadn't been taught in school. And that's of course because school curriculum always just tends to be a little bit behind. So going to your university or college isn't a great option in this situation. What I would suggest, however, is that you do your research online. Find a teacher who knows whatever the website building platform is that you have decided on and that you would love to use backwards and forwards and then go binge all of their content. Obviously, when you're doing this, find someone who doesn't bore you completely to tears while they teach so that you stay motivated enough to actually learn the thing. Next, I would try to find an online course. I think courses are the ultimate shortcut to anything. And every time I want to learn something new for my business, 
What I do is I go find the expert on that topic and then I go and take their online course. The good thing about online courses is they tend to be more often kept up to date, unlike some of the free resources online like blogs or YouTube videos, which sometimes fall behind whatever the updates of the tech platform is. And second, the other great thing about a course versus just a free resource online is they give you the confidence that you know the platform from start to finish and that you aren't missing anything, which is sometimes the case if you're just piecing together free content online. The other thing I've noticed is that the free content online tends to just be tech tutorials, but I can tell you that there is a ton of strategy which goes into building websites Good designers know about spacing and design best practices and hierarchy and strategically placing items on a page to ensure that they get clicked more often. And these are all things that don't tend to be in the free content online. Step number three is to create your portfolio while practicing your new web design skills. So if you want to be a freelance designer and get real clients, then you're going to need a portfolio. But even more so than needing the portfolio, to be honest, you're going to need the confidence that you can actually build websites in order to have confidence when you go get on, say, a consult call with a potential new client. And you need to bring that confidence that, yes, you can create them this amazing vision that they have in their head on the page. Now, normally when you get a new client, they will send you the details of their business and the website that they want. And this is called a client brief. Basically, it's a short description of what the website needs to have, such as what pages that it needs to have and any functionality that the website needs to have as well. They also likely share information about the vibe of their business and brand, and maybe also links to some inspiration websites. Now, when it comes to creating your portfolio pieces, you can either think up and create your own client brief to then build this mock portfolio piece from, or to make it easier for you, I've actually put together two different client briefs for mock clients, one is a brief for a restaurant and the other one is a brief for a florist. If those briefs would be helpful for you, you can grab them by either clicking up above or down in the description below. Now you'll get an email with the brief as if it were a real client giving you the details of what they would like in the project. And then you can go ahead and create your website and therefore portfolio piece from that brief. Now, no matter what you choose, creating your own brief or using mine, you need to create a few websites. You will learn so much in the process of building them and it'll grow your confidence too, which is honestly a huge piece of the puzzle in becoming a very successful designer. When you have done the work, when you've built the confidence, you build the inner knowing that you can genuinely help someone who needs a website. And now once your new portfolio pieces are done, take screenshots of those things and voila, you now have portfolio pieces to share with potential clients and you also have the confidence that you can indeed build websites seeing the fact that you just built a few. Now, even with all of this, you might now know how to build websites, but you still have one very important question that you need to figure out before you can actually take on clients. And that is what to charge. Should you charge a few hundred dollars or a few thousand dollars? You might've heard there's designers charging $10,000 per web design project. You might be wondering how exactly do people command those kinds of prices? Well, if that is your question, then be sure to watch this video next and I'll explain what the going rate is in the industry right now and how much you should be charging as a new website designer.